Hey, welcome back, guys. This is video number six in our series of Python for Beginners. Today is going to be a fun one. We're going to be taking a look at some of the most important data structures in the Python programming language. Uh, I'll really cover two of those being lists and dictionaries. These are the most common ones, and when you're getting started, you really use these a lot. Uh, we'll also do an honorable mention and just do a high-level overview of a uh, few others that are on that same playing field with the lists and dictionaries. Yeah, but these are two of the most important ones and they're very powerful. So by the end of this video, you should know how to create, access, and manipulate uh, these data structures. So let's get started, guys. So first, let's, uh, let's talk about lists. A list is a collection of items that are ordered and changeable. Lists allow you to, st to store multiple items in a single variable. That's a very important uh, key there to think about. So you can have a single variable and you can have a bunch of stuff in there. So we're going to do an example with fruits. Uh, you could create a you could create a variable called favorite fruit, for example, and you could plug in, let's say your favorite fruit is apple. Every time you call that, you can have apple show up, right? But what happens if you want to have a variable with a whole basket of fruits? That's where a list comes into play. So let's take a look at the example code. It's the same thing as creating any other variable, like I'm going to call this fruits, and we'll say equals. This is where it gets different. You have to have square brackets, and then this doesn't have to be strings, by the way, but today we're going to do strings as an example, and we covered strings in one of the early videos. So if you haven't seen the whole playlist and you're new to Python, consider starting from the very beginning, guys. In this playlist, I literally build you from the ground up where we install Python, cover the very basics, and get you rolling. All right, but for this video, back to the list. So I'm going to do apple, I'm going to do banana, and then I'm going to do eh, cherry. So now we have a list of fruits. So let's print that out and see what it looks like. There you go. That printed our list of fruits out. Okay, so now if you want to access specific elements so each one of those is considered an element like apple banana cherry those are all elements within a list uh, if you want to access elements in a list by their index remember guys anytime you're doing anything in programming python included uh, things start at zero specifically in python i don't know every other programming language but when you call like the first thing in this list this is not element one, this is going to be element zero. This is element one, this is element two. So I'm going to get rid of this print fruits and then we'll come down here and we'll do print fruits and then I'm going to call one of the elements. So square brackets and let's call out element zero. So that should print out apple. Let's try it out. Perfect. And then if we change this to one, it would be banana. And then if you change that to two, that would be cherry. Awesome. So that is how you can call out a um, element of a list by its index. So its index is like the number, right? The order in which it sits in that list. Because remember, a list is ordered. You have some other data structures in Python that are unordered, but a list is ordered. Okay, so if you want to modify a list, lists are mutable. <clears throat> what does that mean? It means they are editable. You can change things. If they're immutable, that means it's like concrete. It doesn't change. You can't modify anything. But lists are mutable, meaning you can change their elements. So let's see how to modify an element in a list. So if we take a look, we can say fruits and then call. Let's, call, let's pick on the banana. So let's say fruits element one. And it's simple. Just say equals. Let's make this a blueberry. And then we can do print fruits. And now we should see apple, blueberry, cherry, if that works. Let's take a look. Beautiful. So you've just created your first list. You've learned how to call out elements by their index within a list. And you've even learned how to modify an element within a list. So you're, you're on fire right now. Keep going, guys. All right. So Python provides several useful methods to work with lists. Let's look at some of the most common ones. So these are like built-in functions to a list. So we have a function called append, we have a function called remove, and then we have another function called sort. So let's take a look at all three of those and see what they do. So I'm gonna say 
fruits dot append and then I'm gonna say orange so this does probably what you expect right you're appending which means you're adding another element to a list so if we do that and then we print fruits we should see a fourth fruit in there so we should have apple banana cherry and then orange let's test that out beautiful so now you have a four element list so now let's check on the or let's test out the remove function and remember we're only calling these out and I've removed the code so that list is going to go back to what it says here so it's going to be the original three elements if we left that other code it would be four so let's try fruits dot remove and let's get rid of that apple and then we'll print it print fruits and now we should see banana and cherry are our only two elements in the list here we are, banana and cherry. No more apple because we removed it with the fruits.remove. This would be whatever the name of your list is, obviously, because this creates a variable for it. Okay, last but not least, we can sort them. So these are already uh, sorted in order. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these out of order. So I'm going to do banana here. I'm going to do cherry here. And then I'll do apple here. And just to prove that, let's go ahead and print fruits. And we should see those out of order. So banana, cherry, well, not technically out of order. They're in whatever order we put them in. But we can use the uh, list.order function. I'm sorry, list.sort function. If I said order earlier, excuse me, it's sort. Uh, so if we sort these, by default, that sort's going to be alphabetical. So let's do a fruits.sort. And then you'll just throw it uh, open and closed parentheses there. And then we will do a print fruits. So this should put it in order of apple, banana, cherry, ABC. So alphabetical order. So let's go ahead and run that. And there you are. So obviously uh, that didn't seem too complex. But think about this if you were working with a list of people. Um, maybe it's last names, first names, whatever. There's many cases where you're going to want to have that ordered, right? Alphabetical order. So very handy, very powerful, and very easy functions to use that are built right into lists. So that was the append function, the remove function, and the sort function. So like I said, guys, you are building your skills up. Uh, hopefully your tool belt is not getting too heavy there. You might need to buy a backpack soon because you are getting some skills here in Python. You just learned how to create a list. You learned how to add an element to a list. You learned how to call out elements by their index. You learned how to append, remove, and sort lists. So you are on fire right now, guys. Keep it up. All right. So that was lists. All right, guys. Let's talk about dictionaries now. So dictionaries are different from lists. And a dictionary is basically a collection of key value pairs. Uh, and I'm going to cover exactly what I mean by that in a second. So unlike a list, a dictionary is unordered. It's changeable and they are indexed by keys. So let's get right in there and see how we create one. So first thing we have to do is define it by giving it a name. So we'll say person in this case. You can do whatever you want, cars, anything, right? Just get creative with it, have fun. So person equals, and then do your open and close curly brackets. And then the first thing you're gonna do is give it its first key. So this is a key name. Now we have to give a corresponding value for that key. So the name is John in this case. And then let's do another key, which would be age. Like I said, key value pairs, right? I'm sorry, this is going to be a number, not a string. <clears throat> and another important note, put a comma after each one of these key value pairs until you get to the last one. So we'll just do three. So in this case, I'll do city. And let's just say New York, because why not? And no comma after that one. So we can clean that up by getting rid of that open space. And then we can print person, and we should see all three of those key pair values. So let's test that out. Perfect. So we have name John, age 30, city, New York. So that is how you create a dictionary, and that's how you populate it with key pair values. Now, you can access dictionary elements by their keys. So this is very powerful, right? So maybe you have this um, variable called person and you need to know the person's age or the person's name. You could just call that out without having to print the whole thing. 
And you'll do this in programming because obviously if you're trying to pass a value to another function, uh, printing the whole thing is not going to be a choice. You're going to break your code or you're going to get unexpected results. So if you just need to extract a certain value, you can do that by calling the key. Remember, key value pairs, right? So let's call the key. So let's say print person, and then we'll use square brackets, and we'll call the uh, key of name. So give me the name of the person, please. There you go. It's John. We could do the same thing. If we want to print them both, we could do the same thing and put age here, right? So give me the name and then give me the age of the person. Oh, it's John and he's 30. So that is a very powerful way to um, reference or access dictionary elements. You can use the key to access the corresponding value. I know I'm being redundant, but I want you guys, I want to make sure you guys understand what a key value pair is, right? I think I've hammered it home enough there, but if not, let me know. All right. So dictionaries are mutable as well. That means you can change their values, add new key pairs, or remove them. So let's take a look at that. So if we want to modify John's age, maybe he's getting older now. He's a whopping 31 at this rate. Uh, we're going to say person age because we're going to reference that key again, right? And then we're just going to throw it a new value. Again, key value pairs, right? And then we can say we can add a new one here. So let's do person email, which isn't a current key. So it's going to know that and it's going to add it. And we're going to say this is Johnny Boy at, I don't know, Karate Dojo.com. I think it reminded me of uh, Johnny from Karate Kid. That's why I said that, but whatever. And then we will delete one of the values, right? Or one of the keys. So we can say delete person. And then I'll say uh, city. Let's get rid of a city. So now if we print person, we should see the age has changed to 31. We should see a new key in there, a new uh, key value pair of email. And that's Johnny Boy at KarateDojo.com. And then we're going to delete the city. So we shouldn't see that anymore. So let's take a look and see how that worked. All right, so we see the name is John. We didn't touch that. The age has changed to 31, and we now have an email key value pair of Johnny Boy at KarateDojo.com. All right, cool. So that is how you can uh, interact with and modify a dictionary and its um, elements, a.k.a. the key value pairs, right? All right. So next, we're going to take a look at some of the common dictionary methods. These are like functions that are built in. And let's just jump right in and look at some of the most common methods of working with dictionaries. So I'm going to get rid of all this. And then I'm going to say keys equals person.keys. And then I'm going to say values equals person.values. And then I'm going to say items equals person dot items. And then we have to put our parens. Now, if we print keys, let's look at what happens. So we just get the keys, right? So if you want to see what keys exist in that dictionary, you can print those keys. Same thing for values, right? Print values. So we left the print key statement. So the first one is the keys. The next one is the values. So we see John 30 in New York. And last, we can do print items. So that'll give us the key value pairs again, right? So we see that the first one gives us just the keys. The second one gives us the values. And the third one gives us the key value pairs. So another powerful way to interact with these dictionaries, you don't always need the pair. Sometimes you just need to uh, know all the keys to kind of show you what that um, schema looks like, so to speak. All right, so 
to wrap things up, let's create a small program, guys, that uses both lists and dictionaries, and then we'll create a list of dictionaries representing a collection of books. So this is, it sounds complicated, but it's not too complicated. We're just gonna create a list, and then inside of that list, there will be multiple dictionaries representing a small collection of books. Let's take a look at that, guys. So we're gonna do books equals a list, which is our square brackets. And then inside of the list, we're gonna have multiple dictionaries. So we're gonna say title, and let's do 1984. Sorry, that should be a string, 1984. And then we'll say author. That's gonna be George Orwell. And then we'll do the year as the last key. And that will be a integer of 1949. So this is the end of the first dictionary. So we're gonna put a comma and then we're gonna create another one. I'm gonna copy and paste because the keys are gonna be the same. And let's tab this out. So I'm gonna say title and this will be, oops, to kill a mockingbird. The author in this case will be Harper Lee. And the year was 60. And then we'll do it one more time. And the last book is gonna be The Great Gatsby. Author is F. Scott Fitzgerald. And that was in 1925, way back in the day. I'm not even that old yet. All right, so that is our list, and our list contains multiple dictionaries. And we don't need this comma because that's our last item in the list. So I just wanna show you guys that you can create a list that doesn't just have like strings in it. You can have multiple objects, in this case, multiple dictionaries, right, within a list. Okay, guys, so let's do a little bit of a print exercise here, and we're gonna look at how we can parse through the list of three different dictionaries. In this case, it could be three million, doesn't matter. But we're gonna, we're gonna run through or iterate through the list, and then we're gonna run a command against each one of the dictionaries within the list. So let's go ahead and do a four book in books. So that's just saying for each item in the books list. And those items in this case happen to be uh, dictionaries. So we are gonna do a formatted string here, and then we're gonna use curlies, and we're gonna say book, and the first key we'll hit is the title. So we gotta do square brackets, and then uh, let's do single quote title, and then close out our curlies, and then we'll say space by, and then we'll call the book, and in this case, we'll say author, single quotes. I need to get out of insert mode. That's throwing me off there. There we go. Author, and then we'll close that square bracket and close the curly. And then lastly, we'll do book year. So let's do another paren. And then we'll go with B O O K, and then we'll do our square, and then we'll do year. And then we need to close that paren as well. I'm sorry guys, hold on. We need to do a paren to close the book, year, and then we need to do our ending quote, and then we'll wrap that up with the end paren to close out the whole print statement. Okay, so that should give us the title, author, and the year for each book in that list. Let's see. There you go, 1984 by George Orwell, 1949. So that put it in parentheses, if you guys didn't catch that there, these, these parentheses here put the book's year in parentheses. 
So that was just an example. Hopefully that didn't get too complicated there, but that's just an example of how uh, we were able to nest dictionaries with inside of a list. So this is a list of dictionaries, and then we can use a simple for statement to loop through each one of those dictionaries within the list and pull off a print uh, function or a print action on each one of those books. All right, so that was what I wanted to show you guys on the uh, lists and the dictionaries. Again, these are the most common ones you'll be using. There are some other similar data structures within Python. I won't go into depth with them, but I will just show you a quick example of each one. So a tuple or a tuple, uh, these are similar to lists, but they are immutable. Once created, their values cannot be changed. So it's a little less likely you'll be using a tuple, but here's an example of a tuple. So I'll just print that out. Just note that you can't modify this, right? So if you had something that was like concrete and it couldn't change, you could use a tuple for that or a tuple. Tell me how you pronounce it. Tomatoes, tomatoes. All right, so the next one is an unordered, it's a set, right? So a set is an unordered collection of unique elements. So again, not ordered. So we'll copy this and I'll just paste the example here. So colors red, green, and blue and print the colors. So that's a set. And again, a set is an unordered collection of unique elements. All right, guys, so the next honorable mention is the array. You may have heard of an array. Um, we can create one by using the array module and they store only homogeneous data types. So what does that mean? It means you can't mix your data types in here. That's why a list is you know, more powerful. Um, but you can use an array to store homogeneous data types. So if you have all numbers, and this is basically telling it that, hey, this is gonna be an integer, that's the data type here. So you can store those. And if we print that out, we'll see that it prints out one, two, three, four. All right, guys, so there are some other ones, but we're not ready. We're not at the point where we wanna even cover the rest of these. I feel like it's gonna get more confusing than anything. At this point in your learning of Python, uh, if you can, not even master, but if you can become familiar with lists and dictionaries, you're well on your way to success. Uh, there are some other ones like name tuples or name tuples. There are dequeues or dequeues, which is, um, it's just confusing. They're double-ended queues, basically. Uh, NumPy arrays, which is for more um, mathematical things, large data sets. And then there are pandas, data frames, and there's others out there too, but these are some of the most common ones. But again, guys, make sure you get some practice in using lists and dictionaries. Follow along with what I did. Make up your own. Make sure you're, you know, referencing things by key pair values. If it's or key value pairs, excuse me, if you're working with dictionaries, uh, make sure you're learning how to modify um, lists and dictionaries because that's important as well. It's one thing to create one and print it out, but make sure you know how to interact with it. How do you query the data within it? How do you modify the data within it? How do you delete the data within it? So those are very important things for you guys to practice. So hopefully this was another good lesson for you. I know this is where for some of us it may start to get a little bit challenging, but I promise you guys, practice, practice, practice. That's the way I learned, hands-on, practice, practice, practice. And if you run into snags, guys, there's forums out there. And nowadays there's ChatGPT, right, or Copilot. So ask it a question. You can always ask me a question. I just won't be as quick to respond as a AI robot because I do have a full-time job as well. And I'm a dad of three. So <laughs> a little busy, but I'm going to respond if you guys ask me questions. I promise you that. It just might not be as prompt as a robot would respond. So get some practice in, guys. Let me know what you think. Um, if you guys have examples of what you've done with your practice as far as creating lists and dictionaries, I'd love to see it. And again, if there's any questions, share it with me in the community. And I promise someone's going to get back to you and steer you in the right direction. All right, guys. Hope you like this video. Number seven should be out soon. Hope you're all having a great week so far. Until the next video, take care, guys.